In 1899, he moved west to Colorado Springs on the edge of the Rockies, where the wild terrain naturally attracts thunderstorms. Tesla believed that when lightning struck, the impact created huge electrical standing waves, rather like the crests and troughs of water set up around a pebble tossed into a pond. Each day he traveled out of town in a buckboard to test his theories. Keep on prodding the earth at its own natural frequency and like the lake, standing waves might set up right throughout the planet, ready to be picked up anywhere. Lightning, he thought, might do this naturally. If electrical impulses could be transmitted by this method using the stratosphere as a return path, it might be possible, it might just be possible, he thought, to make power available anywhere along the globe without the use of wires. This is the exact spot near the Deaf and Blind Institute where Tesla had an enormous experimental station built. There's not a trace of it left today. the largest coil he'd ever built, 52 feet in diameter. It discharged an incredible 10 million volts. Tesla called it his magnifying transmitter. It advanced his ideas about wireless and made him lord of the lightning when testing his resonance theory. And somewhere deep down, it called out his showman's streak. He arranged multiple exposure photographs of himself, casually seated while lightning streamers apparently played about his ears. The so-called transmitter helped Tesla study a wide range of radio and electromagnetic effects. He wrote up every day of six months' work in this, the Colorado Spring Notebook. But for some unknown reason, despite the enormous amount of effort and cost, he never published his results. Alexander Marincic is professor of electrical engineering at Belgrade University. Although Tesla is a national hero in his Yugoslavian homeland, there are statues, a museum, his portrait on dinar notes. It wasn't until 1976 that the book was published with Marincic's commentary. Many people were interested to see what Tesla was thinking about what he was doing in his Colorado Springs laboratory and uh, whether it is possible or not to transmit energy without wires. Somehow, probably many people expected to learn how to transmit power without wires. And I think probably abroad, the same reaction came out, but a little bit later, when that book was translated in English. Publication gave impetus to a movement, especially in America and Canada, which believes Tesla was a century ahead of his time. The cause of power transmission without wires hasn't been advanced by the notes now held by the Tesla Museum in Belgrade. But there is plenty more honey in the pot. Robert Golka, an American engineer, noticed that the magnifying transmitter sometimes created ball lightning. Ball lightning appears as a globe about the size of a football. It floats through walls and disappears into nowhere. Curiously enough, that's exactly what you might expect from a high-frequency discharge. Tesla said his transmitter often made ball lightning, but it was small and lasted a very short time, so photographed poorly. The very tiny bright points on this 1899 photo 
show all the camera could record. Golko set out to recreate this little understood phenomenon. He built the world's largest Tesla coil at a disused Air Force base in Utah. In 1945, the 393rd Bomber Squadron was stationed here. It flew regular practice runs for the day it was to drop an atom bomb on Hiroshima. Enola Gay, the plane which carried the bomb, was in the hangar next to the one containing Project Tesla. Golka believes that ball lightning can help start up nuclear fusion reactions and solve the world's energy problem. Unlike present-day nuclear fission power stations which create radioactive waste when heavy elements are split, nuclear fusion should be cheap and clean because it works by combining readily available hydrogen isotopes. But it needs tremendously high temperatures confined in a tiny space to get it going. Goka thinks the apparent self-containment mechanism of the ball lightning football could supply both startup energy and container. Golka's coil goes one better than Tesla's. It discharges a spectacular 25 million volts. If one of the streamers makes ball lightning, all this terrific energy should be contained inside the ball. Golka inspects the discharges at close hand, wearing a protective suit. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked. Long-lasting ball lightning hasn't appeared. Golka has retreated to raise more money, and Project Tesla is in suspended animation.